sleep if we faint not. Uh, the last couple of psalms were really on topic tonight at, on the, this subject. You know, in, in life, there's, uh, you may not have noticed yet, but there's often difficulties. <laughs> and sometimes when you least expect it, and sometimes it's your own dumb fault. <laughs> uh, you know, we love it when we blame somebody else, but sometimes we just can't get away from it. But you know, the, the Bible is saying here that uh, we just need to keep on keeping on. And God says, in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, he, has, he has reward, but it mainly comes later. You know, the, there's a lot of good things in life. There, there really are. But the main reward comes later. The other verse I wanted us to look at, this is just another side of it, is 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5. 2 Timothy 4 and verse 5. we we'll look at quite a few scriptures tonight and hope that you'll, you'll follow along. 2 Timothy 4 verse 5 says, But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Now, that was written specifically to a young pastor, but it applies to all of us in that, you know, in the ministry, in serving the Lord, there's difficulties, and we just need to endure and later on, verse 8 there, he says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Reward, the main reward comes later. There's great blessing to serving. Uh, you know, if you serve the Lord, every once in a while you just you get a, a blessing. Uh, there's dis discouragements and all kinds of things in the ministry. Uh, I really thank the Lord for the, the uh, older men that God put in my ministry when I was young. Uh, and I've tried to pay that on to other young idiots that, I mean, young fellows that get into the ministry. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're young, you just do some of the dumbest things, and uh, sometimes when you're old, too. But uh, in the ministry, uh, there can be difficulties, and uh, the main reward comes later. We need to endure. Life is difficult. As Christians, we know God has a good end for us. We know that. We believe that. But sometimes along the way, we get tired. You know, we know where we started, we got saved, we, we know where we, we started, and we, and we know there's an end, you know, heaven is in sight, you know, we'll be like Jesus, uh, all these things will be changed. And, but sometimes on the journey, we just get tired, don't we? Uh, he says, don't be weary in well-doing. In due season, we'll reap if we faint not. And, and as I thought about this, I thought, you know, the, the, the two main parts of our foundation are Jesus and the Bible. Jesus, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 12 and uh, verse, verse 1 through 4. You want to just listen to these, that's, that's fine, but we'll, we'll look at several uh, scriptures tonight. Hebrews chapter 12, the Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, that ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. You know, stop and think about that. Here Jesus came to save us, and what did we do? We crucified him. Now you've had that happen, where you're, you're, you're wanting to bless somebody, you're wanting to uh, do good to somebody, and, and boy, they turn on you. Well, consider Jesus. Uh, we need to consider him. We need to look to Jesus. We need to endure. We need to do things because they're right. We need to do it because it brings glory to God. Uh, Jesus endured, and, and he makes us this promise. Uh, I read this a lot. Hebrews 13, verse 5, the end of the verse he said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. He promises to go with us. And here's the next verse, Hebrews 13, 6. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. And as I was thinking about that verse, I thought, you know, no matter what I'm doing, no matter what the time is, I can say, the Lord has promised to go with me. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Uh, we can endure uh, because of Jesus. Now, the question is, do you have Jesus? 
That's going to make a difference. The other reason we can endure is because of what Jesus has said, the Bible. Uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 25, just makes the statement, the word of the Lord endureth forever. Now that has more... <laughs> now, this, this copy may not endure forever. <laughs> this is my uh, duct tape Bible. You know, it's, it's on its third layer now. Uh, this copy may not last, but God's word... And it's talking about what it says. It's eternal. It's not going to quit being true. It's not going to quit working. I've had lots of things quit working. <laughs> Some of them are my body parts, you know. <laughs> uh, the Word of God will endure forever. And we can count on that. It's unchanging. And it goes with us as we go. There, there's a verse in uh, 2 Timothy 3, verse 14, where he uses the word continue. Continue. He says, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned as has, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. We can continue with God's word because God's word will continue. We don't have to worry that, oh, suddenly it won't, won't be true. You, know, you hear these churches where they say, oh, you know, uh, we don't want to follow that old message anymore. We, we're changing with the times. Listen, you change with the times and you'll be wrong. But if you'll stay with God's word, you'll be right. What's the old illustration? He went to the, to the blacksmith, and he had all these broken hammers over in the corner. He said, man, how'd you break all those hammers? Said, oh, hitting, hitting on the anvil. How many anvils have you had? He said, I've only had one anvil. The anvil stays, the hammers break. And listen, that's, that's the way life is. People are always banging up against God's word, and they'll be the ones broken, not God's word. Uh, we can stay with God's word. The basis of enduring is, number one, Jesus, but as well what he said. The word of God endures forever. If you're in 2 Timothy chapter 3 there, uh, look, look at what Paul says about his own personal, partly his own personal testimony there. Verse 10, it says, Thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came to me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. You know, he could list all the places where he'd been. He'd been persecuted. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. He had to endure. He went through them. He endured. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Well, then here's an encouraging verse. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. <laughs> He's, it's going to get worse, he says. Deceiving and being deceived, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Can't you see on the horizon, you know, maybe I'm the only one, but can't you see that it's going to be more and more difficult to be a Christian? Can you not see it? Man, it's, it's happening all around us. There's going to come a day when to preach this book will mean we'll go to jail in Australia. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned of and hast been assured of and of, uh, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And then he talks about how God's word is, is God's word. It's his, God breathed it, God's inspiration. Uh, folks, uh, Jesus in the Bible, that's the foundation. That's why we endure. That's why we do what we do. And, and you know, if, if you go there to Hebrews chapter 11, we're not the first people down this road. Now, there's been people right along who have trusted God. And this, this is just a, a quick a snapshot that God gives us here in Hebrews 11. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but uh, starting in verse 32, he's just kind of winding up when he says, what, more, what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and Jephthah, and also and, of, and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Man, difficulties, aren't they? <laughs> Out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of Cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, bonds and imprisonment. You know, not everybody won, did they? Some of them, uh, they lost the battle. 
They were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. Jesus hadn't come yet. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that's set before us. You see the context then of Hebrews chapter 12? All those that have gone before us. Uh, there's a, a great example. He calls it a cloud of witnesses of people who have loved the Lord and lived by faith and endured. And you know, that's, that's our part. That's one part of, of the Christian life, is to endure. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 3 is, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, well, here it is. 2 Timothy 2 verse 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. God's call for us is, is to endure. And you know, there's, there's a lot of different areas that will come up. Here are some specifics. You can endure criticism. In uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, I told you I was, we're going to look at a lot of verses, and uh, like I said, you can, you can listen, you can turn there. 1 Peter chapter 2, one of the things we need to remember is that even Jesus was, crucif was criticized. Uh, there was often people who gave him a hard time. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 19, he says, For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults you take it patiently? He says, we're not talking here about when you suffer because you did wrong. He says, there's going to come times when you suffer because you do right. He says, but if when you do well and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Uh, you see, uh, we can endure criticism. Uh, there'll be those who will, uh, uh, you know, say you're, you're wasting your time living the Christian life. Let me say this. If the criticism is right, humble yourself and change. You know, that's, that's good. But if the criticism is wrong, just remember, God is the judge. Uh, we're not going to stand before people in the last day. Uh, we're going to stand before the Lord. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, he puts it this way, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to give an account uh, of what we've done in our, in our body. Uh, God is the judge. Sometimes you'll be criticized for doing right. Now, be careful of your heart. Be careful of your, your attitude. But you're there, there may come a time when you're going to, like the disciples, have to, dis, have to say, we ought to obey God rather than men. I've known people who've, who've lost their job because they either would not do wrong or were committed to doing right, living for the Lord. We don't hear much about it, but all the time in our world, there are people who die for following Christ. And we don't hear about it much in this country because it doesn't usually happen in what we call Western countries. Uh, but there's people all over the world who, for following Christ, uh, are, are still today giving their lives. Uh, we can endure criticism. In line with that, let me say this, we can also endure praise. Now look with me at a couple of verses here. John chapter 12, verse 42. And you'll see what I'm, I'm talking about here. John chapter 12, verse 42 he says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. 
For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. You know, it's a real easy thing to do what you do so that people will like you, or at least not dislike you. I can remember doing things when our kids were little, and I, I don't know, I just seemed to go nuts when you put me in a, an elevator with my kids. You know, I'd do something funny. I thought it was funny. When your dad does it, it's not funny. And uh, they'd say, oh, Dad, what will people think? I, we'll never see these people again, kids. <laughs> what do we care? <laughs> uh, you know, it's real hard sometimes not to worry about what people think. And I don't mean whether you're doing right or wrong. I mean just what people think, how they're going to treat you, especially family, you know, people that are near and dear to you. Uh, these were men who were, they were afraid they'd be put out of the synagogue. They love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Uh, I've met people who would not be saved. They would not trust Christ because they could not live without the praise of man. Man, what a tragedy that is. Uh, we worked in an area where I, I would call it very tribal. And, uh, you know, if you didn't reach the chief of their tribe, uh, it was real hard to, for someone to come out and to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be different. I'm going to trust Christ. I'm going to trust the Christ of the Bible. Uh, some men just can't, some people just can't live without the praise of man. Uh, Jesus said in John 5, How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Listen, we can't really believe unless we're looking to God. Uh, we can endure criticism. We can endure praise. Uh, the Bible says, He that glorieth, let him glory in, in the Lord. I think it was Bob Jones said, Do right, even if it makes the stars fall. <laughs> Listen, if you doing right means the universe is going to explode, do right. Man, I'll be looking forward to glory, and so will you. Uh, you can endure praise. You can endure temptation. You know, temptations will come. I, I was thinking about some of the temptations when I was a boy. And, you know, sometimes I didn't even know they were temptations. Somebody suggests something, man, I was so dumb, off I'd go, you know. And I didn't stop and think, is this something the Lord would want me to do? One of my favorite verses on this is 1 Corinthians 10, 13, where he says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And the next verse is, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. See, we can endure temptation. God says He'll help us. He won't allow a temptation that's more than you can handle. He'll not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. He'll make a way of escape. Listen, when temptation comes, look for God's escape route. He's, he guarantees that it's there. Now, we can endure temptation. We can endure catastrophe. Yeah, I'm constantly amazed at what people live through. We, we live such sheltered lives now. You, you read about people who went through World War I, World War II, the plagues. and You know, after World War I, uh, more people died from the flu than, than were killed, I think, in e either World War I and World War II together. Hundreds of millions of people just died from the flu. They had, they had no cure for it. Uh, catastrophes. You know, think of people in the Bible like Joseph. Remember Joseph, his brothers wanted to kill him. They said, no, let's just sell him. He ends up a slave, he gets lied about, ends up in prison. Man, that's catastrophe after catastrophe. You know what? He endured. And God used him. Uh, Daniel. Daniel, a young man. Uh, I think probably about somewhere between 15 and 20 years old. Taken captive. I don't know if you know what this means, but he would have been emasculated. I mean, his life was a catastrophe at that time. But God used him. Uh, Job. We talked about Job the other day. You know, what a, uh, one thing after another, messengers come. He must have thought, oh, no more messengers, you know. His sheep are gone. His camels are gone. His children are gone. Paul. You know, people followed him around. Uh, trying to, you know, oftentimes getting him thrown in prison, and eventually his life was taken from him. You know, Joseph said this toward the end of his life when his brothers uh, came to him. He said, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. He was willing to endure. 
Daniel was confronted with sin as a young man when he was taken captive. And the Bible says Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. Whatever happens, I'm going to follow the Lord. When he was confronted with death for praying, can you imagine? If you pray to anyone but the king, it will kill you. The Bible says he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. In sight of anyone who cared to look. Job said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. He endured. Paul, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. You know, catastrophes come. Difficulties come. Uh, understand, we can endure by the power of God. Jesus and the Bible give us that, that confidence. We can endure long-term trouble. Yes, it's one thing when trouble comes and boom, it hits you and then it's gone. But some trouble is... Is for the rest of your life. Uh, you know, some things are uh, what the in war they would call attrition. You know, it's after you and, and it's there to stay. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, uh, take a look there in verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. The Bible says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Our life is, we're earthen vessels. We're not superheroes. Was I, sorry, but I, the other day I was watching Spider-Man. Man, you can throw him against the wall and he's all right. Drop him from a high building, he's okay, you know. Kind of, oh, you know, a little bit. <laughs> Listen, that's not the way life really is. And uh, we're earthen vessels. You throw me against the wall, I break, you know. Drop me from a high building, I break. <laughs> I don't get up. Uh, we're earthen vessels. And God says the reason is that the excellency is of God and not of us. Listen, you're not the superhero. He is. And listen to what he says in verse 8. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed. There's things we think, oh, what's going on here? But not in despair. Just because I don't have the answer doesn't mean I don't have to believe God has the answer. I don't know if I said that right, but uh, God has the answer. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. you know, there's all kinds of things happening to us, and God can use us, use that to show us his power. Life is tough, but look at verse 13. We have the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. Uh, God is faithful. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. And we learn these next verses, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. For we look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. There's things that, that come and, and they don't go away. And yet God can use them for his glory. Uh, there's a, a song we sing in our hymnal, day by day, with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. Trusting in my Father's wise bestowment, I have no cause for worry or for fear. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 15, uh, another verse that we've learned, he said, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Listen, as we're going through our difficulties, look for God's grace. Look for what God is, is doing. Uh, in, in 1 Peter 1 and, and verse 13, God says for us to keep our hope in Him. Let me read that verse. 1 Peter 1 verse 13. You've heard this one before. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Listen, we're going to uh, we're going to have it in full when we see Jesus. And what a blessing. We can endure. 
Uh, Jesus said in Revelation 3, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Listen, nobody can take away your salvation, but you can lose your reward. Endure. Uh, you can never lose your place in heaven, but you can sure make yourself miserable on the trip if you want to. <laughs> and you don't have to do that. Uh, our part is to endure. God's part is he guarantees to be faithful. There's no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man, that God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. God is faithful. Look for God's goodness in, in your valley. Uh, someone wrote a song, it's from the Psalms, uh, leave a well in the valley you go through. Listen, when you're going through a valley, go to God and, and find the blessing of God and find the, the grace of God. And leave a well for the next person that comes. <laughs> You know, learn something from what you're going through so that you can be a blessing to someone else. God is faithful. Secondly, God has a purpose. Romans 8, 28. I know it's a verse we love and hate. <laughs> yeah. uh, how does it start? All, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. You know, that's a key to life. Are you looking for your purpose or God's purpose? If you're looking for your purpose, you're going to have an up and down life. You're going to have a disappointing life. God is faithful. God has a good purpose. And thirdly, God gives grace. We could have hit this verse at any time in this message, but 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9 is where Paul talks about his thorn in the flesh. He had a physical problem, and he asked God to remove it. And God's answer was, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Basically, God said no. <laughs> he said, Paul, you've got this thorn in the flesh so that you can have the strength of God on your life and not the strength of your body. You know, sometimes the strength of your body will lead you away from the, the strength of the Lord. You'll depend on yourself in, instead of the Lord. God gives grace. That, that verse we started with in Galatians 6, 9, I learned something this week. He, he said... Uh, not to be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap. That word due has to do with a private, due season is a private personal thing. Due is, it, it, it fits you. Exactly when you need it, exactly for you, God will help you in your distress. God will work the thing that needs to be worked. It's personal in due season. Let us not be weary, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God gives grace. In 1 Timothy, it describes God's grace as the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. I don't know what that says to you. That means not only more than I need, way more than I need. <laughs> There's plenty of God's grace. And then he says, with. So he adds something to it. Faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. When we need grace, God says in Hebrews 4.16, He tells us to come boldly under the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In 1 Peter, the Bible calls Him the God of all grace. You want grace, He's the only source. He doesn't say we won't suffer, but what He does say is that after you've suffered a while, that He'll make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be the glory. So he says uh, he's faithful. He says he has a good purpose. He said he has grace available. The question is, are we willing to ask? I find in my own life, when I'm in trouble, I tend to ask the wrong thing. I say, Lord, I'm having trouble here. Can you change my situation? Instead of saying, Lord, I'm having trouble here. Can you give me grace? <laughs> You're nodding your heads because you do it too, don't you? Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if you just change the situation and make it nice. But you know, God sometimes has a, well, scratch the sometimes. God always has a good purpose in the things we're going through. But we need to live for His glory. See, by God's help and by God's grace, we can endure. We can endure. Be not weary in well do doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. In Luke 18, uh, Jesus gave a parable and he taught that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Uh, you know, sometimes we not only don't keep doing well, we just kind of 
we keel over backwards, you know. If you've ever been around when somebody fainted, it really, it, it throws a spanner in the works, you know. Everybody uh, has to stop doing what they're doing and looking after that person who fainted. Uh, be careful. Uh, be careful. Uh, we ought to pray and, and not to faint. Now, let me say this. As I prepared this message, I thought, boy, this sounds really negative. The Christian life is more than just enduring. But I can guarantee you, enduring will be included. You know, there's, there's a whole lot more to the Christian life. And God tells us we're to have the fruit of the Spirit. And he tells us the joy of the Lord is our strength. But I can, I can guarantee you, the, the people who wrote those words that, that God used to write them, uh, they went through times when they had to endure. And uh, we will too. And we can. We can endure by God's help and by God's grace. And let me encourage you uh, to ask for the right thing when you're going through that valley. Ask God for His grace. He's got plenty. And giving it away will not diminish His supply. Now let's go to the Lord in, in prayer this evening. I don't know how this affects you tonight, but uh, you know, as you go through difficult times, uh, it's nice to know that, that God understands and God has grace for us. God has help. Father, thank you so much for your love. Uh, Lord, we don't always understand the situations of life, but Father, as you've revealed yourself in your word, we believe. We believe that you're faithful. And, Lord, we believe that you have a good purpose. And, Father, we believe that you have grace that's sufficient in our time of need. And uh, Father, we want to claim these promises, and we ask your help just even in, in believing. Help our unbelief. Help us as we go through the, the difficulties of life to trust you. And Lord, help us to be the testimony to others that we need to be. Thank you, Father. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.